Hey everybody, this is Justin with Digital Tutors, and today's top tip is related to one of the most exciting parts of the 3D pipeline. That's right, UV layout. Alright, UVs are not that exciting to most people, but we'll cover a few things that will make the process go faster and make it slightly less painful. All right, so I'm going to jump into Maya here, and you can see that we have our character with a texture map on him. So to get that texture map applied to him, we do need to have a UV layout. If I click on him, you can see what that UV layout looks like. Here in the UV texture editor, you can see the uh, texture applied uh, here, and you can see how those UVs relate. Okay, so it is a necessary procedure that we need to go through to be able to get the textures and normal maps and things like that applied to our characters. Uh, there are a few tips that we can look at, though, to make this process go by a little bit quicker. So let me look at one that the uh, UVs are slightly different here. And so let me jump back in to the uh, texture editor down here. And so here you can see that we've got uh, things changed up a little bit here. Things aren't quite done. And so one of the things that I like to do when I'm laying out UVs is I'll usually do uh, an automatic, uh, automatic map on many of the pieces unless it really is close to uh, a cylinder or a spherical shape which can get you closer. I'll just kind of start with an automatic map. Uh, and so in cases like these jeans you can see that we have these laid out with a nice seam uh, down the middle and they're kind of unfolded into this sort of cylindrical shape. When you do an automatic map if you have any geometry that flows kind of underneath this thickness of the jeans or up at the top it'll often lay that out into something like this. So you'll end up with geometry that really should connect down here to the bottom of our cylinder, but it's laid out up here in uh, not always a straight line. So some of these are connected um, and some of these are in a kind of a, a circular shape, which is not really what we want. So if we come in here and start to just move and sew, some of these will work. You can come in start to move these together. But you can see here we've got the seams at the wrong spot. And then when we get to kind of like these, if we just move and sew those, those are going to be kind of a pain to uh, sew together. So usually what I like to do when I come across this is just isolate these. So I know that this is uh, going to go onto the part of the jeans down here. And then we'll just select all the edges and I just will cut them all. So what I've just done is selected all those, just hit cut. Now everything is separate. So that if I come in here and select a shell, they're all separated. Okay. Now it may seem like a pain, but now all I have to do is come in here and select these bottom edges and move and sew. And then all of those get popped into place. Now you can see that they're not sewn in the middle. So when I sew the next row on, I'll just make sure to select all those interior lines. And when the next row gets popped on, those will automatically get sewn together as well. So you can see now I've got these. And I can go ahead and select this bottom row to sew that. There's nothing more that's going to go on the bottom. We just want to uh, go ahead and sew those middle, middle lines together. But if you have geometry that is connected to this, you want to make sure to deselect that. So you can see up here, if I actually just hit move and sew, it's going to move that boot down there. So um, when you do that last row, you want to go ahead and select those edges and then just control drag across anything that you don't want uh, associated with that. So, you know, you can drag across this whole thing just to make sure. But now you can see that all I have selected are those interior edges. So now if I sew, it's going to just sew those together. And then I can take and uh, select the UVs and just do an unfold to just kind of clean that up, okay? And so that enabled me to just grab all those individual faces and pop them down there without even thinking about it. So we have these left, so all we have to do, those are cut apart. We have to do is select these, move and sew, one more time, move and sew. The last time, we'll just control drag across to get rid of that selection. It's a lot easier than coming in and deselecting each of these individual lines here. And then we can go ahead, sew that together, and unfold it. And there we go. We've got the bottom part of those jeans. So if you have parts of uh, kind of pieces that you're laying out cylindrically or in, uh, in other ways, you know, for instance, in this shirt, you can see we've got this small edge 
which if we do an automatic map, that's probably going to be mapped in a different way. You just do the same thing. You select the whole thing, just that uh, shell, cut all of those edges apart, and then snap them back to the main body in the configuration that you want. Just speeds things up a little bit. Okay. Now, another thing that I want to look at is using shade UVs. So right now, it's kind of hard to tell if there are any UVs that are flipped. But if we use shade UVs, which is this little button up here, you can see that everything that's good is blue. But then we also have a couple of other colors. We have red down here around the eyes. And then we have a purple. So when you see blue, uh, just think that, okay, that means good. When you see red, that means that we need to flip this. So we can come up here, and you can see we have a flip horizontal, flip vertical. So flip in the U, flip in the V. So we can just flip this, select this, control, right-click to shell, flip that over. Okay, so everything is blue. So it's facing the right way. Now when you see purple, that's going to give you an indication that there are some overlapping UVs. So if I select one of these and control, right click and say to shell, and then move this off, you can see that we have a red one on top of a blue one. And so we can select this, flip it. Now if we overlap, you can see that we've got this dark, dark blue. So that's another indication. So kind of a fourth color. If you see that dark, dark blue, you've got something that is overlapping, but it's not flipped. If you see a purple, uh, then you've got two that are uh, overlapping one is flipped and so then we can take this and sort of move it down into uh, in the position here on our UV layout okay so utilize that to just to make sure you don't have anything flipped um, that's a great way to tell if you have any overlapping UVs if you've got a shell that is you know slightly overlapping you can kind of see look for that blue color that dark blue as you uh, normally don't want to have those overlapping UVs in some cases uh, it'll work, but uh, in many cases you want to avoid that. So that's something that you can do to help. Now, you can also uh, start to lay these out in multiple tiles. And the way we have this laid out right now is for a single texture map to uh, account for this whole guy's body. But if we're going to be maybe going into Mari and painting a texture or using Mudbox to paint textures, we may want to have multiple tiles because, you know, if this is a a 2K map, just a very small portion of that map is dedicated to his face. And so maybe we want to have his uh, entire head as part of a single UV map. So we can come in and start to, you know, enlarge this into another tile, which is this next square. Aside from the 0 to 1, then we've got this 1 to 2. And so we can start to lay things out that way. Okay, we can come in here and take the shirt and you know maximize the size of the shirt within the the uv space get that scaled up there okay now when we start to work with tiles a lot of times if you have uh, textures painted for these tiles for instance if i go in and paint a texture for the shirt or for this face here and then we end up wanting to change the position of the tile we just want to make sure that the uh, position of our UV shells within this tile does not change. So let me put a couple more pieces in here. Maybe we've got the arms in this spot too and we've painted a texture for this and we want to actually move it to a new tile. So what we can do is come up here and let me go ahead and pull this open a little bit more. Alright, and so I want to come up here and you can see if I click this little refresh, it'll give us our current UV values. And then we have a little toggle over here for absolute and relative transformation. Okay, this is U and this is V. And so if I go ahead and click on this, and under U, I'm going to hit 2. And that will actually pop it two tiles to the right in the U direction. Okay, so if we're working like something like Mario or Mudbox, we can use multiple tiles. We can actually start to move these around. So if I take this one, you can see I can get the current position. Well, let's say now I want to move it up one tile. So in the V direction, I can hit 1, and it'll pop that up. Again, maintaining the same relative position within that tile as it moves it to a new tile. So you know, once you've got your UVs laid out into multiple tiles, it is, you know, if you were to, to kind of manually move this, you'll probably never get it 
in exactly the right spot, but you can very quickly just pop it over into a new tile, either in the U direction or in the V direction, uh, just by using these inputs up at the top of your UV texture editor. So if you need to create those multiple tiles, that's a good way to really quickly uh, move those around. Okay, so those are just a couple of real quick tips uh, that you can use when you're working with UVs. And so make sure to check back at DT Labs for the next top tip.